Education is the flagship programme for AusAid as an agency and that's really articulated uh, at the country level in Kiribati when you look at our commitment to the education sector in terms of uh, scholarships, TVET and also phase one of the Kiribati Education Improvement Programme. From the University of Different State. The Kiribati Education Improvement Programme, KIP came into being at the request of the government of Kiribati in answer to widespread community concern at the standard of education being offered to young in Kiribati as they face a new and perhaps different future in the modern world. This is the start of a 10-year program, a joint program between government of Kiribati, um, key funders including AUSAID, UNICEF and UNESCO. Um, which looks at providing a foundation for basic education for all young people in Kiribati on every island in Kiribati. Stage one of KEEP is 8.2 million and the focus of that will be on facilities uh, which is basically schools, policy and legislation so the ministry can function in a modern way. The third area is workforce skills development, which is a real focus on teachers um, and just providing them with the resources and tools to do their job. And then the last area is curriculum and assessment. So it's really focusing at the curriculum that's being taught at the school and making sure that's appropriate and actually fits in with the government of Kiribati's objectives. The key project is very important for our country and our people. It affects our communities, teachers and above all our children and the future generations. Each and every one of you here including those that will be attending the similar workshop in Christmas Island later on in the year are key players in implementing the key project. We are having a workshop for the eight teachers and all principals in the primary, junior and senior secondary schools. Now, one, two, go. Ninety senior staff have come from 16 scattered islands to attend this inaugural workshop. The key people in any education system are the school leaders. So it is fundamental to have school leaders involved, school leaders owning and school leaders driving an education reform agenda. A lot of research from around the world has shown if you don't do that, you may as well give up before you start. Um, I think it's important to have this commitment and it's fantastic to see the response and the number of head teachers that have turned up to, to start this process. We are all part of a community, we are all part of a school. Early in the workshop, the speaker from the House of Assembly shared his views. What do you think parents talk about? What do you think com the community talk about? What do you think the politicians talk about? What do you think the island councils talk about? They talk about principals and head teachers. It is a requirement or a prerequisite for high quality learning to have good community relations. It is a prerequisite. For some communities you don't have to do much work to get that. For other communities you have to do quite a lot of work. If the school and the communities did not have no, that good relationship, then the community will not bother to look after you know, the facilities. They will not bother to look after the resources of the schools. And those things contribute a lot to the learning of the student. And if that good relationship is not really well achieved, then the community will not bother to send their students to schools. There is a lot of evidence that suggests if you have a problem with English level up here, it also is a problem with English level here, it is a problem down here, and some people actually argue it's a problem with early childhood. An important tool in assessing schools and their teachers and the learning outcomes for children are the local Starkey results. From these, it is possible to measure the results for each school against the national average. And in future, the performance of each class teacher will also be able to be measured. So if you're having a look at a school with that sort of profile and you compare with the national, you can start seeing where your strengths are and where your slight weaknesses or real weaknesses are. But it is not good enough to retain children in school without giving them a quality education. 
The last thing I want to see is bored children sitting there not learning. I actually want to see motivated children excited to get to school. The critical relationship between teacher and student is the most critical component of edu any education system. Stand up. I see you. I so when you start looking at a system like Kiribati, there is certainly some fantastic examples of learning and there are some fantastic examples of, of, of good teaching. It is, in Kiribati, it is very mixed. At the bottom end, there is some atrocious performance. There will need to be, in my view, intervention strategies on how to work with some of those poorer performing teachers, some of those poorer performing school leaders, to actually work out whether that is, with, with additional training, whether they make the grade, or whether there is a different role for them. In this, the first phase of the KEEP project, much needed reconstruction work will be carried out on six outer island schools. This school on Meragay points to the need. However, the junior secondary school on the same island is in an almost equally desperate state of disrepair. And if you went into that school cold, there isn't a door on the school. It's in a shocking condition, but in spite of all of that, they have got fantastic quality results across all the subject areas that are tested. And it's much higher than national average. It is, it is an area that demonstrates, in spite of the conditions, it is not the school that maketh the child, but in fact the teacher. I think one of the strongest things that came out of the workshop was how well and effectively they worked as a team, as peers, where they started looking at all the schools in Ireland on performance and comparing notes and asking the question, why can't we work together across our schools more effectively? Now we knew when we were planning it, it was going to be a, a horrible amount of stuff to give to them but I'm grateful just how, how they basically hung with it all the way through. So it's the sheer volume of their role and the complexity of their role that they really picked up. And I'm actually incredibly optimistic that many of them will go back and share that documentation with their teachers and, and start building real school teams. One particular area that I was quite fascinated about is how to improve your leadership skills in schools so that there is cooperation and collaboration among the teachers and the community. It's really interesting and enjoyable and we learned a lot of things to improve our school. Well, my dream is to have good teachers in every school, in every island, recognized by the communities um, for the great jobs they do. And so, after four very intensive days, the workshop draws to a close. Australia, UNESCO and UNICEF are very proud to be working in partnership with your government, the government of Kiribati, on what is, in my view, the most important policy implementation since independence itself. We will continue to maintain, well into the future, our commitment to deliver real change across all parts of the education sector in Kiribati. But we can't do it alone. And so it's now up to you to become active partners in KEEP. You can make such a vital and long-lasting difference to the nation you are continuing to build. As the beginning of a new era, in education and a new chapter in the history of the people of Kiribati.